After a little over two years of early access, Grounded was fully released in September of 2022. Interest in the game not surprisingly spiked shortly thereafter. Also not surprisingly, interest in the game fell off pretty quickly. So why am I making this video now? Since the full release, the game has received two updates, and I want to discuss whether the game is worth playing now for those of you who have played it at full release, and for those of you that have either never played the game or played during early access but didn't come back for the full release. Let's start with those of you that played at 1.0 because most of you watching this fall into this category, and also because it's only going to take a minute or two. So real quick before I jump into this, I want to let you know that all the footage in the background is going to be from the super early game, so there's not going to be any spoilers in there in case you don't want to be spoiled of anything. So first up, let's talk about those of you that played at or after the 1.0 release for Grounded. The 1.0 release for Grounded was on September 28th, 2022. That was the update that completed the story, updated the upper part of the yard that had not been updated up to that point, as you know, of course, because you've played it to this point. Shortly thereafter, on December 8th, 2022, was the 1.1 update. This updated added some quality of life features, did some balance changing, bug fixes, and also some cosmetic features. Nothing in there was really too important to be worth mentioning individually. You probably heard about it, obviously, honestly, because it came right after the full release. So let's move on to the th second update that came after 1.0, which is the 1.2 update. This is the super duper update. This one dropped on April 25th, 2023. So I want to dive into this one a little more because this had way more stuff to it than the 1.1 update. First up worth mentioning is the fact that there's a new area to explore. It's not a brand new biome. It's basically just an existing area that was in a part of the map that you've already most likely been to. But it is a it is a new area you can explore somewhere you can go inside of. It doesn't have a ton to it, but like I said, it's a new area that wasn't there before. Next up, there were two new enemies and one new optional boss that was added to the game. The You've probably seen them if you've seen the trailer for the new update. I'm not going to spoil it for those of you that haven't. But in addition to that, to go along with them, there's also a new armor set, a new bow, and a new headpiece. So new armor and weapons to go along with the new bugs. I'm completely surprised that they added these things because honestly, I thought after 1.0, it was just going to be cosmetic stuff. So the fact that they're at, they added some new bugs, a new boss, and some new armor and weapons is pretty cool. There's also five new mutations to unlock, as well as three new achievements. So you'll get those by just playing the game, honestly, and they're not too difficult to unlock. But like I said, no spoilers. Last but not least, there's 90 plus new building pieces. I think the number might actually be over 100. I forgot to count. I remember when they initially mentioned it was 90, but then they changed it to 100. So it's 90 plus or 100 plus building pieces that were added. These include new walls, new floors, new roof pieces, new types of material to build out of, tons of new things to put inside of your base. There's also going to be a stuffed version of every single creature, a wall mount for every single creature, because those go along with some other things. And all in all, if you like building, that the 1.2 update added so much. So if you're into creative building or just like building bases, then you're going to love the new update. Now, the downside is going to be between from 1.0 till now, there's no new story. And honestly, if you've already 100% of the game, you're probably going to be able to do all the new stuff in about three to five hours, roughly. I was able to do the 1.2 update, pretty much almost everything in two streams. So I was able to do it in about five hours or so. I went into a blind. I also took my time. There's a lot of backtracking in it. So that's where most of your time is going to be spent. If you beeline it to the new area and do the stuff in there, you can probably do it all in an hour or two. So that's the only downside to it. So is Grounded worth coming back to if you've played the game at 1.0 or shortly thereafter? To me, if you're built like building, then it's definitely worth coming back to because there's tons of new building stuff to do. If you're in it for just the survival aspects, there's been tons of quality of life features. Things I didn't mention up to this point would be things like auto, uh, auto depositing all of your items into chests. There's sorting on the chest as well as your backpack. There's lots of other quality of life features like the mutation loadouts and things. And all in all, the game's in a much better state right now. The one point if one point two, if this was the one point, if that was the one point oh update, I think the game would have been even better received. I mean, obviously, it was well received, well liked, and I recommended it at one point oh. But certainly, the one point two update brings the game to a new and better state. But if you're not in the building and you're just in it for the survival aspects, I would say I would definitely not start over. If you want to check out the new stuff, you can probably do it in a day or two. And all in all, it's probably not worth coming back to if you've already done everything and kind of got bored of the game. But if you like building, come back to it. If you're still on the fence about playing Grounded again and want to know everything that was added in the most recent update, click the card in the top right corner. Now for those of you that have never played Grounded or have not played it since the 1.0 update or did not play it at the 1.0 update, so this would be anybody who played during early access at some point but did not actually play through the full game. So what does Grounded have to offer? Let's start off with the story. Grounded offers a story that's approximately 20 to 30 hours. It really depends on how much how how much focus you put on it. If you blow through it, you can probably do it on the low end of that, maybe even faster. 
If you take your time, it's probably going to take more in the long run, but it's going to take roughly 20 to 30 hours just to do the story. That's none of the really side optional content or maybe just a little bit of the side optional content. Now, how, how about the story? The first three quarters of the story is well paced. This was everything that was in the game up until the 1.0 release. And then for me, the last quarter felt kind of rushed. I know I'm not alone in this feeling. Lots of other people have commented this to me on my videos. They've told me during my live streams and in my Discord and stuff like that. So I'm not alone in that feeling. I feel like the game, really like the beginning of the game is super well paced. And then you're going to get to a point, I'm not going to spoil for you when it is. And then you're going to kind of feel like, man, everything just kind of comes to a screeching halt and the game kind of just feels like it ends. Now in total, Ground is going to offer you about 50 to 100 hours if you want 100% the game. Obviously, it's going to be on the longer end if you're going in completely blind. So if you don't watch any guide videos, which honestly, even though I have tons of them, I definitely recommend not looking up any guide videos if you're playing through the game for the first time or if you haven't played it in a while. Only look up guide videos if you get stuck on something or if you're missing something because it's just going to make your experience much more enjoyable. You'll be able to explore things on your own and just be able to find things naturally instead of just going straight to where places are because that's just going to cut your play down, play time down super, super rapidly. But in general, it's probably going to take 50 to 100 hours. That's to get to the 100% achievement. Now, I think the 100% achievement probably has changed a little bit because they added some stuff in this new update. So, but it's still going to be in that time frame. That doesn't even include doing everything. You're probably it will probably take over 100 hours to get to some of the things I'll mention later on. Because even in my 100% save, there were things that I did not have completely maxed out. So it's a it's got a lot of it's got a lot of game to it. But on the negative side, there is a lot of optional content. So. Like I mentioned, it's 20 to 30 hours of story, but then it's a total of like 50 to 100 hours in total. There's lots and lots of side con optional content. Honestly, the second part of the game or like, like the last quarter of the game where I said it felt rushed, that's because there's a giant portion of the map that you can pretty much completely skip depending on how you play the game. So there's a large, large chunk of the map that is completely optional. There's also lots of optional other content, which I'll get to in just a second. Now let's talk about the crafting aspects of the game because of course it's a survival game and all survival games have crafting. Grounded has more than 70 weapons and tools to choose from to use in your adventures. There are 17 complete armor sets and 15 individual armor pieces. So in total, there's over 100 plus armor, weapons, and tools to use as you explore through the backyard. Of course, in survival games, you also have to manage your hunger and thirst as well as your stamina. Things you're gonna use for that are gonna be meals, smoothies, as well as some other items and features in the game. There are currently 15 meals. There's 13 smoothies. Each smoothie has three variants. There's also individual pieces of food that you can pick up around the map. There's also some other, there's other, there's other things that are not considered meals. There's kind of snacks. So in total, there's more than 50 plus food items, meals, and smoothies to help you manage your hunger, thirst, as well as to potentially boost your stamina, as well as give you some other bonuses. Grounded also has lots of resources. I'm saying, I said it has over 100 plus resources to collect. It might actually be over 200. Honestly, I didn't go back and count, but there are well over 100. It's probably close to 200, if not more, different resources to collect. Some of them you're gonna use frequently in different crafting recipes and you use them throughout the game. Others you might only use one time or you might not have to even use them all. It just depends on how you play through the game. As I mentioned earlier, if you like building, Grounded is gonna have you covered there. It has a pretty decent building system. In total, it's going to have lots and lots of building options. There's three different floor types, six different wall types, three different roof types, and five different door types. There's also over 100 de uh, decor storage and utility pieces. In total, there's 300 plus building decor storage and utility items to pick from, to choose from. Some of those obviously you're going to need because some of them are crafting stations. Others are, it's really optional for you. You can put down different things to decorate your base. There is a new feature that was added to the game. So building a base is definitely going to be more useful now. If you don't like building, you can completely skip it. I played through the game completely after 1.0 without really building any base. I just had all my stuff sitting in one place. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil any of that for you. I'll let you discover those things for yourself. But I just had all my stuff plopped down in a safe place. Didn't really build any walls. It wasn't until the 1.2 update when I came back and I started building a base because I wanted to take advantage of some of the new stuff that was added in it. But if you like building, you're going to have tons and tons of options to build here. And if you just like to build, you can obviously, honestly just jump into either a custom game mode or creative and just build to your heart's content. Next up, I want to talk about the creatures and kind of the combat system. So first, let's talk about the creatures. There are eight passive, eight neutral, 40 aggressive, and there are six bosses in the game. So a total of 56 creatures you can fight and six bosses. There's also two creatures around the map that you can't fight. One of them is passive and won't bother you. The other one is aggressive and you cannot kill it. There's all, like I said, there's six bosses to fight. You're going to have four of them are going to be optional. Two of them are going to be mandatory to complete the story. So like I was mentioning earlier, there's a lot of side content to this game. So as you can see, four out of the six current bosses that are in the game are optional. 
honestly, you can take on as many of these enemies as you want. You can skip as many as you want. It's really just up to you. Now, along with those creatures, in total, there's 56. If you add up the creatures you can fight, plus the six bosses, there's 62 gold cards you can collect. So they added the feature where you can gather information on the creatures, and it will basically tell you what they're weak to, what they're strong to, and what items they drop. In addition to that, once you've done that, and then you start fighting the creatures, after each kill, when you loot their body, there's a chance of getting a gold card. For regular creatures, it's only 1%. For the bosses, it's sick, it's 10%. Uh, Although there are some enemies where there's only a certain number of them where they can't respawn, that you'll get it, it's a guaranteed, you'll get it 100% of the time. But in total, there's 62 gold cards to collect. So if you're a collectionist, I never even got all the gold cards. I think I only had about 50% of the gold cards on my 100% save that I had roughly 80 to 100 hours into, if I remember correctly. So getting all the gold cards, there's a lot of RNG involved in it, but it'll give you plenty to do if you're trying to look for those things to do. Next up, let's talk about the combat system. So combat in the game is, I would say it's average for a survival game, maybe slightly above average, kind of depending on what survival games you played. It's not going to be as in-depth as like an ARPG. So if you played like Diablo or Path of Exile or any of those kind of games, it's not as in-depth as that. Honestly, I would rank it below Valheim in terms of combat, but I'd rank it above games that I've recently played, probably like Small Land. It's, maybe it's even with Small Land because that has kind of a different combat system, but I've played some... My, like Minecraft as an example has a really, really basic combat system. So in, all, in general, Granite has a decent combat system. Moving on, let's talk about the backyard and everything that's going to be in the backyard. And also some of the other features and systems that we didn't talk about before we wrap this up. So Grounded has, obviously you're in a backyard, you're shrunk down. There are more than 100 plus landmarks to discover. Those landmarks are scattered across nine different biomes. And each of the biomes, are, many of the biomes are different. So you're going to get a pretty wide variety of the biomes. The one I'm in right now in the background is probably going to be the grasslands. That's the first biome you spawn in. That's predominantly the, the area you're going to be in at the beginning of the game. As you're adventuring, you're also going to find some milk molars. There are over 100 milk molars to discover. Milk molars are used to increase your character's stats as well as some other things like carrying capacity on different things. So you'll be discovering those along, as you adventure through the world. Like I said, I'm not going to spoil where they're located or anything like that, but Rest assured, the entire map has them in it, so you'll have to search every corner of the map to get all of them. Also, along the lines of collecting things, there's going to be 50-plus scabbies to find. These are basically just cosmetic things, so you can change the user interface using the scabbies. They're just completely optional. They don't provide any buff or anything like that. They're purely cosmetic. So basically, when you go into your UI, you can equip the different scabbies, and it will just change the color scheme. You can have one for daytime, one for nighttime. There's also dozens of story-related items, items to find. Some of them you're going to need in order to progress through the story. Some of them are just completely optional. If you find them, you find them. If you want to get the complete backstory of the game, all the lore and everything like that, you're going to want to seek out all of those. If you want to be able to craft everything, there's going to be recipes you have to find. You're also going to find some recipes in order to fight some of the bosses. You're going to have to find some recipes. Some bosses require recipes, others don't. So all in all, there's dozens of story-related items to find as you're exploring around the map. There's also 31 trinkets currently to find in the game. These can be found in various ways. Like I said, try not to spoil things, but these will give you buffs ranging from things to help you in combat to looting, other things like that to help you manage your just survival stats. You can get these in various different ways. And like I said, don't want to spoil it, but certainly they're all over the place in the map. You'll have to ser search the entire map. Some are more useful than others. Some provide a bonus, but also provide a negative. So they kind of have trade-offs for them. So just extra things that not necessary to use, but you'll basically, you, you'll, they can be useful in certain situations. There's also 38 mutations on, to unlock. The mutations can be equipped to give you different buffs. These will range from things that will help you in combat. Maybe they give you more movement speed or buff certain weapons, all the way up to pro giving you resistances to certain types of damage that you'll take in the game. So you can unlock those in various ways. Most of them are earned by gameplay. And last but not least, there's 40 achievements to earn. So if you're an achievement hunter, you're going to have plenty of stuff to do in this game. Most the achievements are going to require you to do a lot of the optional content. So if you're trying to get to the 100% or you're just like getting 100% of the achievements, you're going to have to do a lot of the optional content. So to answer the question, is Grounded worth playing if you've never played it before or if you played it during early access but not did not play it at 1.0? The answer is going to be if you like survival games, it's 100% worth playing. And honestly, if you have Game Pass and you don't even like survival games, it's worth playing. It's on Game Pass. That's going to be the best way to play it because it's included in your Game Pass subscription. If you don't have Game Pass, you can usually sign up for it for a dollar or maybe you, at, at worst, you can pay like $10 for it for one month, play through the game. The game's also available for $40 on the Windows Store, Xbox, as well as on Steam. It's usually on sale. I think it's on sale right now. Honestly, as I'm recording this, there's also a free weekend on Steam. So if you don't have Game Pass, but you have a PC, you can try it on Steam as I'm recording this. 
if you're watching this in the future, it's probably not going to be free anymore because I think it was only for a few days. But all in all, if you like survival games, it's definitely worth playing. So anyway, those are my thoughts on Grounded. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're new to the game, here's a video that will show you some tips and tricks for getting started in Grounded without any spoilers.